This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The truth. Such a, a, a tiny concept. A small word in our vocabulary. But uh, the key for all of our lackings. Like that angel mentioned, I also, in the beginning of my process of coming closer to the Creator, was not seeking for religion, not mitzvot or learning Torah, it was not at all on my uh, agenda. Only the truth. I felt that I was so far from my own truth that I felt like I need to make a change in my life and start seeking for the truth with all of my power. I couldn't understand why am I lying to myself all of the time. Why if my friends are asking me if I want to go and hang out with them, I'm saying yes even if I don't want. I couldn't understand why I'm wearing clothing that are not comfortable for me to wear. And why I need to pretend to be happy when I'm sad or whatever. Why I need to make up stories all of the time. I was so far from truth and I felt it. So I decided to make that change and truth makes you feel so comfortable, so yourself. And, um, and this is something that is so inspiring me because when I realize how easy it is to connect yourself to the truth, the truth is here. The truth is just not to lie. It's, uh, and, and, and just to make that concept that is so divine and high and, and many books of Kabbalah and, and, and righteous people wrote about this concept of truth and, and you can learn combinations of the letters and, and, and numeral values of that word and you can read about that word in the Zohar Kadosh and in, and in the books of Bala Sulam and okay, but what is the real truth for us is something that is so accessible, so valuable, so, so, so close to us that with simple advice and simple guidings a person can find himself in the peak of the world, in the highest spiritual levels that exist in the world without being a genius, without being the most holy and righteous man, just by connecting himself to the truth as you hold it, as you understand that it is, by not lying to yourself, not by claiming that you're holding the truth, like that every crazy person can go and say, no I know the truth and he's gonna twist something to somewhere else. We're not talking about waving the truth and claiming to hold the truth. We're talking about being honest, being sincere, being truthful. Just really say the truth. If someone tells you you're lazy, so think about it. Maybe I'm lazy. Instead of just, no! You're lying! No, wait, maybe you're lying. Wait, breathe. Yeah, you know what? I was lazy. And then, then stand up, just like, move yourself off that American comfort sofa and, uh, and, and walk toward the truth and it's going to bring you from one step to the next and then you can find yourself very very fast standing in front of the Creator, the King of all Kings, that His seal is a seal of truth and His name is Truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. That's His name. Now, you want to be close to Him? So Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with Truth. That's the whole story. Now when you say the truth, you're close to him. And a person that is lying, a liar person, cannot stand close to Hashem. Because the verse is saying, A person that is lying cannot stand in front of him. So as long as you're lying, you're far from Hashem. Now you want to be close? Say the truth. That's it. That's where it starts and that's where it finishes. Now, the power of the truth is to illuminate every darkness, every dark point that you have in your life. If you will be honest with yourself, sincere with yourself, just to look at that point, at that weakness that you have, at that fear that you have, at that stress, anxiety, depression, sadness, confusions that you have with an eye of truth. And it means to be strong enough to admit, I am weak. I don't know, I'm scared, I don't have an advice, I need help. 
Maybe I should consult with someone else. Maybe I can call a friend. Maybe, maybe I'm just going to sit and, and, and cry with myself and, and understand that I'm too embarrassed to admit that I am afraid of life, that I'm afraid of relationships, that I don't know how to speak, that I'm afraid to expose myself, that I don't know who I am yet, that I haven't found myself yet. When you're going to see that, huge amounts of light already going to wash the dirt and the filth and the darkness and the fears and the anxieties that are blocking you from the closeness to the Creator that is always good. In the moment that you will say the truth on every part of your life, it's going to bring you closer to the Creator in that point. Now if you're going to discuss your life with the Creator on all of your life issues, your life will shine. Every single moment of your life is going to illuminate with the light of truth. And you will be close to the Creator in, 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 in all of your being, in all of your existence. Now, it's also true that huge righteous people wrote about that concept of truth in the books of Kabbalah, in the Zohar Kadosh, in Kitve Arizal, in all of those holy books. It's been spoken, it's been, it's been talked, but it doesn't mean that it belongs only to those people that are sitting in the heights and over there they're discussing those huge Kabbalistic concepts. Because divrei emet nikarim, words of truth can be recognized. You can recognize the truth. You can recognize the truth inside of yourself. If now you ate something for lunch and you came home and your wife, you forgot that she prepared lunch. She made lunch for you and you came and you ate. And she puts the food and, she, and you're not eating so much because you ate. You forgot and you ate or you were hungry and you ate something on the way. And now she is asking you, why are you not eating? You know the truth. If someone asks you, can you give charity? You know the truth. If someone asks you, if you have time to help him, you know the truth. What that you're going to choose to answer might be different. Maybe you're going to choose to hide the truth right now. Maybe you have good reasons to do that. I'm not saying. But the truth you know. If someone is looking at your eyes and telling you you're a liar, you know if he's right or if he's wrong. You know about yourself. Maybe you're going to say, no, I never lied to you in my life. Yes, okay, you chose to lie right now again, but it's okay. <laughs> Maybe it's okay. I'm not judging. I'm not being judgmental at all, but you know that you just lied. You, between you to yourself, you know the truth about yourself. You know exactly who you are, and you know what are you able to do and to make. What are your powers? What are your skills? What are your, ta your talents? What's your desire? And also you know from what you're afraid, from what you're worried, what you don't know, what you're scared of. You know who you are. We're just too scared to admit that truth. But if we're going to follow the truth of our hearts, we're going to set ourselves free. We're going to be like sparrows. We're going to be like, like, like free people. Completely. We will not going to be slaves of our fears anymore. And this is the, f the biggest gift of them all, to be a person of truth. And again, to be a person of truth, it's to be honest between you to yourself. It doesn't mean that you must expose yourself to everyone and to tell everyone everything you did. No, I must tell you, listen and start making phone calls to all of those people from your past. No, listen, I hurt you. When I... It's a mistake. Maybe by making those phone calls you can make a damage. You don't know. You need to judge. You need to, to think deep. You need to pray for those things to understand exactly what should be your actions. You need to calculate your moves. But at least in front of yourself, in front of the King of all kings, to be honest. To open your heart in front of the Creator with words of truth. Simple prayer, gonna set you free from your own fears and gonna give you the power to know exactly who you are. Because one sin is dragging the next. So when you start lying about something, you lose your direction completely. It's not one mistake. Because let's say for an example that you lied and now someone catched you on that lie or uh, that lie or at least he's suspecting you on that lie. 
So he's going to ask you, you didn't call me. Why you didn't call me? And he's suspecting that you were on the phone with someone else. And you said, no, I just completely forgot about it. But he's suspecting something. Now he's going to ask you about that. Now you have to lie again. But he's going to tell you, but your phone was occupied. But I know, but I was there. So, and then what you're going to have to do to make another lie. And then he's going to make another stir step toward you. And you're going to have to lie again. And one lie is dragging you to the next. And in the end, you don't remember where it all started. Because you're wrapping yourself and destroying yourself with small lies that are all coming from one reason. That you're too scared to admit, to say the truth. I forgot about it. I forgot about you. You were not as important to me in that moment as I'm pretending that you are to me right now. Or at least I'm trying to pretend that you are for me right now. <laughs> but that's the truth. And maybe you don't want to hurt him. Maybe you don't want to hurt him. So, okay, so at least be honest with yourself. Go to the field. Go to your room. And talk about it with yourself. Say to yourself, hey, I'm not being honest with my wife. I'm not being honest with my husband. I'm not being honest with my parents. I'm not being honest with myself. I'm lying. I'm too scared to be who that I am. I'm not honest. I'm not an honest person. Why do I need to be so scared? What's my problem? Why am I running those relationships in such twisted and bent way that I'm fighting myself, hiding, and, okay, money. Money is the reason? Great. My fears, my fears are the reason? Okay, let the truth shine upon those points, those dark areas in your life as well. And now, start investigating, dissecting, finding, finding yourself, the truth. Okay, now... I'm lying because I'm afraid not to have money. I'm lying because I don't want to get into an argument. Okay, let's check that situation with the eyes of truth. Why am I so scared? Why my confidence on money depends on those people? Why my, uh, my fear from that? What, what the, what's the reason? What's the cause for my fear from <coughs> arguments? From, from, from conversations, from investigations. Why I'm so afraid to be stand in front of the wall? Why, why am I so scared? What is the real point? And then you're going to find it. I'm afraid to, to be left out. I don't want to be betrayed. I don't want to disappoint. I'm afraid to disappoint. I don't want to be screamed at. I don't want to be insulted. Okay, great. Why? You see that also the truth, like that we said that one lie is dragging a whole train full with, 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 um, Coronot. Cars. What? Cars. Carts? Car. Train car? Train. Train. Carts. Carts. Oh, wagons. Thank you. Wagons. <laughs> wagons. So like that, the first wagon, the first lie is dragging the next ones, the, the rest of them after. Also the truth is helping you to find the next step that will bring you toward the higher truth. And in the end you're going to find yourself standing in front the reason of all reasons, <coughs> standing in front the king of all kings and understanding exactly what you need to fix and how can you bring down the real bounty of the world to come to this world. I want to tell you something about this creation. The creation that the creator created is a natural creation, is not a real creation. It's a fake illusion that is blocking the real light of the Creator from His creations. In the beginning, in the earliest days before of creation, in the days that caused Kedem, in the ancient days that we were only souls before of heaven, everything was one. There was endless light. It was all infinity. There was only the Creator, and all of the light that he contains, endless amount of light, that was the existence of the world. Now, in a certain moment that was above time, the Creator had a thought, and he decided to create the world because he wanted to reveal his mercy 
And now, when he is giving out all of his good and all of his bounty and all of his light, all of his grace and all of his kindness to himself, because he was the only one that was there, so there was no one to enjoy his love, his greatness, his kindness. So, what did he do? He created a wall. He separated a certain amount of light, those are our souls, and he sent them behind a certain curtain. This is the world. He created the world that is a thicker creation than the earliest light that was there before. And he sent his troopers, his soldiers, his brave souls to a hard mission to find the way back from behind that curtain. And we are over there right now. We're in the darkness. We're in the exile. We're in this physical world seeking for the truth, looking for the good, find, to find answers to all of our questions, to fulfill all of our lackings, to find the path, the justice and, and, and kindness. And where are you, Hashem? And we're calling you, Hashem, and praying and shooting arrows of, of, of prayers to the sky and trying to find the truth between the cracks and in the darkest hours of them all, and in the filthiest exiles and, and, and horrific places that cannot be even described in words. That's the mission that we've been sent for, to find Him from behind that wall. Now I'm asking you, where is His mercy? Now, okay, he sent us to that exile, but we said that his intention was to reveal his mercy, to influence his love and his greatness and his kindness and his bounty to his creations. Now, we've been sent to a dark place, a low place, a filthy place, a cold place, a terrifying place that you don't have no security, no confidence. In every moment you can be hurt in ways that we're too scared to mention even. And we know from history and from our life scars and, and scratches and, and bleeding wounds that we still carry within that it's very hard to describe this world as the world of pleasant and joy and happiness and satisfaction and confidence. Oh, we can see the mercy of Hashem. Oh, now Hashem, we understand you. No, we don't. We can't see it. It's too dark. It's too cold. It's too scary. We're too worried. We're too confused. We don't know. So where is that thought of the Creator in those ancient days that He wanted to reveal His mercy and that's why He created the world and set that thick wall between Him to us and now we need to find that way back. Where is His mercy? I hear only judgments. I hear only constrictions. I feel only that I've been pushed into a cell, into a body, into a prison and I'm stuck inside of my body looking for that answer that I can't find, that I can't reach. So where is that mercy? Where is the kindness of the Creator? The kindness of the Creator will be revealed completely in time of redemption. Now in time of redemption, we're going to understand that all of this world that we thought that is a real world was only a world of lie. al Madashika, A fake world. Fake reality and not a realistic place, not a real place. It was a place only in our constricted minds. It was a place only in our narrow thoughts. Only when we were under judgments of our fears, of our stress, of our lack of knowledge, only in that place we thought that the world really exists. But when Mashiach will come and our eyes will be open wide and we will be able to experience the light of the Creator that will illuminate the world with the light of love, we will become above nature again and we won't be sick 
anymore. And we won't suffer from no kind of poverty anymore. And no one gonna want to hurt us so we won't have no more enemies. We won't have no reasons to be scared and to be afraid and to run away and hide from no one anymore. So that's why we're gonna understand the greatness of the Creator. The light will shine from the darkness in such a way that will cancel the nature completely and we will all gonna live eternal life. Now, every person in this universe has that potential. You have that ability, that channel inside of you to connect yourself to your spiritual source as long as you're alive. As long as the soul is shining from within and you're alive and you can breathe, some inner hidden source of energy is blowing life into your shape, into your body. You have that access to go back in time to that place that is above time and to connect yourself to infinity, to the Creator, the Blessed One, to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. To the source of the will, to the source of light, to the illumination of before time, to those ancient days. Now the thing that can bring you to that place is only the truth. Because it's the truth. The lie is telling you that you cannot count on Hashem. You must work, you must run, you should take care, you must do this and that. You have to take care of, and you're afraid and you're stressed. Those are all lies of this physical world that the Zohar Kadosh is calling it the world of lie, Alma de Shikra. But the truth is that the Creator, He is the one that is taking care of you. He is the one that is supplying your food. He is the one that is helping you. And with wonders and miracles and amazing combinations and things that are taking place in your life that you cannot ignore. Because you see those wonders, how people are calling you exactly when you need them and how things are taking place in your life in ways that are much more sophisticated than your abilities and someone is behind that curtain running this system in a way that is impossible for you to grab. How the atoms are running and the energy and the, and the gravitation and speed and light and what's going on? Nature? There is no nature. It's all above nature. And even the science is going to admit and the doctors and, and even the liars, docs, the, 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 the liars, the lawyers going to admit that, <laughs> that this world is, is a world of, of lie. And that all of the truth is so deep and, 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 and planted into the cells of creation and every particle of the creation, every creation and creation is divine and godly and beyond this world. And there is no science in the world, scientist in the world that can investigate the smallest particle, one leaf from one flower. You cannot dissect it and open it completely to describe what it contains. So even the most physical piece of earth, of ground, the, the tiniest germ, you cannot understand it. You cannot grab it fully, completely. What that open your eyes to see that there is a Creator above this creation. Now that Creator is standing behind that wall. And you know, His exile is even worse than us. We feel betrayed. We feel that something happened to us. That we've been pushed behind that wall. We're looking for our way back to the source. We're crying, I want to go home. And I don't even remember where that home is. What is that home that I'm yearning to? Where is it? What is it? And we're crying. Our souls are crying. But the sorrow of the mother is much greater than the sorrow of the child from the separation. Because the mother, she gave birth to her child. Because the mother, she is much wiser than her child. The father that is looking and seeing his son drifting is experiencing a sorrow and anxiety and fear that is not even close to being able to, to describe. We cannot understand the sorrow of a parent, parent that lost his child. The Creator is standing behind that wall and we for sure going to ask ourselves, so okay, Almighty, save us. It's in your hands. You have all the powers to redeem us. 
if we're not going to redeem ourselves, if we're not going to understand who we really are, it will not going to be a redemption. It will not going to be a complete salvation. A complete salvation is when those troopers achieved their goal. When they found the, 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 the answer to that question of, of creation. When He sent us, He sent us to a mission. And we must pass that test. We must come back to who that we really are. What that means that we must find our spiritual root, our spiritual source, that we are above this world. That we are also godly souls. That we are part of heaven. That we are not regular people. That we are connected from our spiritual roots to the divine creator, to the almighty, to the one that is above. And we are channeled to him in a way that we can pull down to this world all of his power, all of his greatness, all of his mercy, all of his answers. And all of His health and wealth and kindness and generosity and bounty and beauty and success and all good attributes and all good things that you can imagine and much, much more. Because the last redemption will reveal the complete greatness of the Creator that it's much higher than the one that's been revealed when Moshe took us out of Egypt. 2,000, 3,000, 3,000 years ago. When Moshe took us out of Egypt, the redemption was not complete. Even though that we could have seen miracles and wonders above nature, the Creator removed the, the, the curtain in a certain way and shown us His power. He was talking to us through the fire. He opened the sea. He changed nature in a way, but He did not cancel nature completely. He gave nature in the hand of Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, so Moses had the power to break the sea. Moses had the power to bring plagues. Moshe had the power to bring out water out of the boulder, that stone. Okay, great. Moses had that power. But in the last redemption, you will have that power. Every single one of us is going to hold that staff of life in his hand. The power of faith, the power of emunah, the power of the free choice to be a person of truth will give you the power and the ability to expose the truth to this world. To reveal to all of your beloved ones that the Creator can really supply the food that is needed in the desert. That He can heal you from every disease, from every sickness. That He can re rise the dead. That He can solve all problems. That He can answer all doubts and all questions. That He is the answer to all of your fears. But the way to do that is to attach yourself to the truth. And like I said before... It's not to be a man of God. It's not to be that righteous one. It's not to be an angel. And also, it's not depends on the number of pages of Gemara or Zohar Kadosh that you're going to learn every day. No, it's not depends on that. It depends only in how close you're going to be to the truth. Which truth? Your truth. Stop lying to yourself. Be honest. And one link going to link you to the next. And one step going to bring you to the next. And you're going to find yourself standing in front of the Creator and realizing that He was always with you. And that this world is a world of lie. And that there was no time ever. And that there was no place ever. And that you're above the place. And that, that all of this world is happening and existing in the same time in a fantastic harmony that we cannot understand. How the animals that are flying in the rainforest in South America are flying corresponding to our speeches and our words. And how the butterflies, those huge, amazing, beautiful ones that are flying only in China, have a straight connection to our thoughts, to our hopes 
to our dreams, to our prayers. And how did that child have not been the, the, run by that truck was because of that charity that you just put into that charity box. And you don't know that. You can't see it now because the world is dark. But you saved that child's life without knowing, without even thinking and planning and not even hoping. But the Creator, that He knows all the thoughts, that He creates all the links, that He makes everything happen in the same time, he runs the worlds, not only your life, just the life of all of this creation and every deer and every sheep and every goat and every cow and every animal and every grass and every leaf and every piece of earth is connected to the source and got a purpose in this fantastic creation. And we, the highest creations of them all, the one that has the ability to speak and to express their emotions and to say the truth and to choose between good to bad, life and death, we have the way to reveal His unconditional love to all of His creations. We can bring down peace to the world, healing to the world, complete redemption. And it's part of history, just it's that part that is in the future. It's that part that will happen in a few moments from now. In our mind, it's going to take a few moments. But in the real world, it already happened. But we are in a certain part of that will, circling toward that time in our imaginary watch, circling and circling and circling and hoping and praying and yearning and pushing and trying and hoping and walking and, 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 and carving and, and, and trying. But in the end, the real truth will be revealed that there is no end. Mm -hmm. When you want to say the word eternity, you use that combination of two weird words, endless. En Sof. In the holy language you say En Sof. En Sof means En means there is no. Sof means end. So two words that are describing no existence actually reveals to you the widest truth of them all. That there is no end. When you want to say endless, you say end, it's the end. And less, it's even less. And that explains to you that there is no end to this world. This is the Creator's wisdom. To tell you, listen, my child, your dreams from your childhood, that's the truth. Who that you know that I am in your heart, that one that you're hoping for, that's me. Hashem is telling you, now, your friends are destroying those dreams. Your parents are destroying those dreams. Your teachers are destroying those dreams. Worst of them all, your rabbis are demolishing those dreams. But the real truth will always be recognized in your heart. Because like we said before, you know the truth. You're not hoping to some kind of a religion judge that's going to redeem you from punishment or from hell. That's not that Father of Mercy that you're hoping for. You're dreaming about something that is much more loving and understanding and warm and that can accept you and that can hug you even that you are like that you are. That's who you're hoping for. That's who you're crying to when you're crying. That's who you're talking to when you're honest. That's who you're going to shul, that, to, to the synagogues when you go to shul. That's who you're praying to, at least that's who you try to pray to. Because you have that inner thought, that inner faith inside of you, that He really exists, that loving one, that source of kindness. He really exists somewhere, and He's accessible. I can reach Him. Now where is He? That's the question. So I'm telling you, the answer is very clear where you can find him in your thoughts right in your mind in your heart right that's what we said over there you're gonna find him I live inside of my people he lives inside of your heart 
Now you want him, you need to go deep. You need to go inside. That's Pnimiut. That's how you reach the Creator. You don't reach the Creator outside. Okay, I'm going to catch that class. I'm going to read from that book. I'm going to follow that rabbi. I'm going to go to that. I'm going to wake up. Seven, six, five, three, two, one, zero. <laughs> zero. You find yourself empty-handed. But I'm learning Dafayomi and I'm running and I'm three times a day in the synagogue and I'm praying in the Minyan and I'm putting Rashi and Rabbi Nuta and I'm keeping Shabbat and I'm finishing Shabbat one hour and a half later and I'm also eating bread fourth Seuda in Motzei Shabbat. I can't stand my life and I can't find God. How can it be? I'm waking up so early. I'm going to sleep so late. I'm fulfilling all of my obligation. I'm doing much more than my power. And I'm not finding the answer to my questions. What in the world is happening to me? I'm following other people's opinions. I'm too scared to follow my inner voice. So I'm chasing other people. And I'm trying to hide myself under their wings. But the truth is that they cannot protect you. Not in Judgment Day and not in the daily situation that you're going through with your boss, with your family, with your wife, with your children. No one can give you real advice. The only real advice that you can find is to attach yourself to reality, to the truth. If you're not able to say, I'm not able, if you're able to push yourself to do if you're too scared so to deal with your fears, if you're strong, not to let your fears take over you and freeze you. To believe in the Creator and to find the Creator, it's to believe in yourself and to find your true self. Who that you are. Not who that you can be, who that you're going to become, who that they told you. that Who that you are. Who that you really are. Who that you know that you are. That innocent person that you are. That loving person that you are. That sensitive, so gentle and fragile person that you are. That loving, simple and naive person that you are. You need to be that one. And not to be scared to be hurt. Even if you're going to be hurt, at least you're going to be honest. To fight for the truth. It's to fight for justice. It's to reveal kindness in the world. It's to show to the world that love got power. That peace is meaningful. That kindness exists. Where it exists? In your heart it exists, right? In your dreams, in your hopes. If you're not going to execute it, it's going to disappear from the world. If you're not going to express your thoughts and your emotions, they're going to go down to grave with you after 120. If you're not going to open your heart, open your mouth and say the truth, I love you. I'm too scared to love you. I'm too scared to be loved. If you won't be able to say the truth, you won't be able to reveal the treasures that the Creator planted inside of you, treasured inside of you. But when you're going to be a person of truth, just to express yourself, to say, I'm scared, I don't know how to deal, that truth is going to set you free from all of your anxieties, from all of your fears. You're going to be a free person. And you're also going to set free all of your beloved ones. Everyone that's going to see you, going to admire you going to see in you their role model. They're going to see in you an example for life, a coacher, a mentor, a person of truth, a light in the darkness. Because you not going to become their leader. You're going to be a torch of light to help them to find their true selves. You're not going to take them to your place. You're not going to try to change them and bend them to be your soldiers or your slaves or your students or your followers. No. You're just going to let them be who that they are like that you. You want only one thing, to be left alone, to be okay with who that you are, to be allowed to speak, to be allowed to sing, to be allowed to dance, to be allowed to laugh. People are afraid to laugh. People are afraid to talk, afraid to sing, afraid to dance. 
Don't be afraid. Dance and sing and write and paint and walk and work and investigate and shoot to the stars and into your dreams and don't back off ever. Even if you're going to die on the way. At least you died. After that you lived. You lived your life. You've been who that you are. At least you have not gave up on who that you are. And who that you are is who that the Creator made you to be. And there is nothing more gorgeous and beautiful than the Creator's creation. And it's you! With your face, with your eyes, with your thoughts, with your noise, nose, with your ears, with your mouth, with your laugh, with your emotions, with your life experience and wisdom. Who that you are is who that He made you to be. And that's it. So just let it be. Let the Creator express Himself through you. Don't block His light by being too scared to expose who, expose who that He made you to be. When you're blocking that light, you're blocking the light of the Creator, that light that you are struggling with accepting it. You still have not accepted the Creator in your life. He created you with your face, with the color of your skin, with your accent, with the way you speak, with the way you think, with your height, with your weight, with your nature, with your habits, with your fears. He made you perfect. How that only He knows how to make things perfect. The cow cannot judge herself on not being a tiger. It's stupid. She's a cow. She needs to be a cow. The tiger, he needs to be a tiger. He cannot judge himself why I'm not a lion, why I'm not the king of animals. You're not. Don't try to be. Be who that you are. Enjoy your part in the creation. Express your beauty. Go with who that you are. Sing in your voice. Walk in your move, in your way. Express godliness. Like that the Creator created you that's the highest level of His creation. Just we don't accept ourselves, so we cannot accept Him. But when you're going to have peace with yourself, accept yourself, appreciate yourself, recognize your true self by being honest with yourself. Stop lying to yourself and running from yourself and running from other people that doesn't take no place in your life at all. Fake illusions that are screaming and talking and arguing with themselves. Expressing their own fears, their own stress, their own lack of faith. They're struggling. Now you're going to struggle because of their sorrow. Let them suffer. They want to suffer. If you're going to be strong enough and going to become strong, you're going to have the power to heal them, to give them advice, to hug them, to give them support that they need so much. But as long as you're running away, you're making them chase you. You're bringing that fear to take place in the world when you let it take place in your life. Stop being scared from who that you are. That's how you're going to move that stone from that well of your inner wisdom. Those gifts that the Creator gave you. You have an inner channel. You have an inner soul that is divine and endless, and can bring down tons of bounty to this world. Healings, and miracles, and salvations, and complete health, and wonders to the world. The wonders that will take place in the last redemption, gonna be much higher than the wonders that we read about from the Bible, from the days of Moses and our nation. Gonna be so much higher, because everyone, all of his dreams will come true. All of his wishes will take place in life. All of your dreams, 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 all of your dreams. All of our dreams will take place in life, in reality. How wonderful, magnificent it's going to be. It will be so perfect. Everything will be perfect. The light of the Creator will not be blocked anymore. Your job is to open yourself. To unleash yourself, to set yourself free by being honest, by just being yourself, being who that you are. Now, you're also Jewish, 
You're also religious? Okay, great. So, okay. Be. It's okay. You can keep Shabbat. There's no problem. You can eat kosher. Great. You want to eat kosher, right? We eat kosher. No one is stopping you. No, I must eat kosher. Relax. That's not the truth. Serve the Creator out of love. Be observant. Be religious. Do whatever you want. But do it out of your good will. Not because you're too scared. What's going to happen? Who's going to punish me? If you're afraid to be punished, I'm telling you that. If I'm going to be scared to be punished by the Creator, I'm taking off my kippah, I'm taking off my jacket, I'm cutting my beard, cutting my peot in a second. I will never going to serve Him for one moment of my life because I'm afraid of Him. I will never going to serve out of fear. I'd rather to die in the war and not to serve someone that is threatening my life. That's not my Creator. My Creator loves me. Now I love Him back. And I'm doing everything I can for Him. Everything that I can. Out of love. Not even for a second out of fear. I'm not afraid. I love Him. I love myself. That's why I can love you. Every single one of you I love. With all of my heart. Because I love my Father in Heaven. Because He revealed Himself to me. And if He revealed Himself to me, so He shown His love to me. So it means that there is something to love in me. There is someone to love inside of me. Because He revealed His love to me. He shows His mercy on me. So He loves me. So I need to be loved. He found something good in me. So I love me. I can love myself. I'm accepting myself with my lackings. And I have horrible lackings. Like all of you guys, really. My wife will testify for sure. My kids, they carry my scars. I am who that I am. But I can accept myself. I can work on myself. I have a reason to do that. Because there is someone that loves me. Now I can love him back. And when everything is good between us, now everything is good between us also. I can be your friends as well. First of all, you work on your soul, on your inner connection to the Creator. And when you find it, you find the truth. Thank you very much. Hashem bless you. We answer all of your prayers and all of your requests. Amen. Please, if I can ask you to support us, to help us, our nonprofit organization, Emuna Project Inc., emuna.com, it's our website. Please check us online, more than 1,500 videos of long classes and books and amazing content. Please enjoy what the, the Creator is revealing to the world through us and we hopefully going to enjoy what the, the Creator is revealing to the world through you. Amen. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.